Hi guys, so it's coming up to time to apply for the China Government Scholarship for 2025 intake. So I'm going to go through what the process is based on my after my last video, which is about uh, which many of you were asking questions. This is kind of a step by step guide on how to apply. So I'm just going to give an update now about what it's like for 2025 intake. So it's basically very similar. So if you want to get the whole step by step, check out the other video. And I'm just going to show you how you how you log into this platform. And you can see everything here. Uh, you can, if you want to get the information about how to apply, there's there should be a guide that you can download here. And I think it's in Chinese. So you can have a click through. And it basically just shows you how the website works. And if you want to understand this, you can just copy and paste it into the translator if you can't read Chinese, because I imagine many of you don't know Chinese if you're planning to study in China. So, and this also has the list of the uh, disciplines, fields, specialties that you can choose. A lot of students had a question about which programs you can actually study in China. And it basically seems to be that the bachelors in English are not available as mainly bachelors in Chinese programs and then the master's programs in English there are some and then there seems to be more priority for Chinese students. So I'm just going to go through uh, some updates. So you basically want to log in, go through, click through, you kind of decide which of these you're going to go through. So China government, the category A is for students who are working with embassies. So if you're in your own country, you can apply through the embassy. In it, the category type B is if you're going through universities. So these seem to be the two main ones. And so you'll just go through, um, apply online, fill out these details, which I'm not going to do, but you choose which one. It's, it's not actually an online platform. It's an online platform that you then print and you have to send the hard copies. So make sure you don't forget that. And uh, there's also like a, a guide here, which we've created on China Emissions, which has a lot, a lot of information about scholarships as well. So you can learn more about it and how it works. And they basically have um, the China government scholarship and then every university has their own scholarships, which may be percentage scholarship of like 10, 20, 30 percent, especially they will give these scholarships to new students or also if you perform well and you have high grades then there's a chance of getting a scholarship in the in the first second second year for example after you're enrolled so you'll basically go through this fill out the form and then just follow each step i think it's quite kind of simple to understand and yeah you fill it out and uh, so some some of the questions students had is about the medical check and it's the medical check is uh, if you have any other questions you can also let me know in the comments I'll try and reply in other videos in the future but one of the questions students had is about the medical check so you do need to get a medical check in your own country so it's in England I think you can it costs about three or four hundred pounds because you have to go privately and just make sure when you do the medical check you, I think you can just search for like the medical check and there's a form to fill out uh, that is important that you fill out according to the requirements of the China medical check uh, medical examination form and then you also need to attach your um, the specifics for example I think it's the x-ray and the uh, heart rate uh, evidence with your application when you submit it and some tips I can give you if you're applying for 2025 intake is just prepare and apply as soon as possible because it's really like important to prepare as soon as possible when they're open. Usually they open after the Spring Festival. So keep an eye out, search all the resources you can online about how to do it. And uh, also reach out to the universities as well to, uh, to ask it for advice and ask about scholarships. But when you reach out to them, um, because universities get many students asking about scholarships, so you could probably just um, reach out and just show that you're a high quality student. You're not just like, how do I get scholarship? Just kind of introduce yourself a bit and make it so that they you they want to help you. They want to they see that you're a high quality student and you're um, interested in their program. You're not just looking for scholarship. You're also 
uh, just come think about from their perspective as well because they do get a lot of inquiries and and don't ask questions that are obviously already on their website because many website many of the universities will post this information so make sure you research it and uh, yeah so that's basically an update and I'll see if there are any other questions that students have I think some students had a question that the um, email wasn't coming through or maybe the website sometimes is uh, updating so if that happens just like try again and it should be working again and any other questions let me know in the comments yeah you need to attach the laboratory exam results yeah when you when you give it to the embassy if you're if you're going for the embassy embassy route then it's a good idea to um, try and go there in person because then you can just often when they when you go there in person they can check it for you in front of you if it's possible and that can be so valuable because uh, they get so many of these applications so if you are just sending it there blindly you don't know if they're going to what they're going to think about it and maybe if you have the documents wrong then they're not going to um, you're not going to know but if you go there in person then you can actually get some usually you can get some like immediate feedback and then you can just go home update it if you need to and then submit it again and it's really interesting when you watch them going through it how they review it it's good to put it in like the same order for example as the uh, as the scholarship application website and just present it like really professionally because this is this is you this is your what you're giving to them so just present it really beautifully uh, for example when you write the personal statement try and make it like a nice font uh, do like a 1.5 difference between the lines just try and make it beautiful and uh, yeah so some sign up issues no, another thing is one uh, great idea as well is to show when you're writing the personal statement is to show that you have like a serious commitment to China I think some of the things they're looking for are to see that you're a high quality student uh, which is obviously important because they want to accept high quality students so you can also you can show that you have some experience of China you're like already learning Chinese is really helpful if you're applying for an English program it's going to help be helpful so these are some programs that you can take that take 12 weeks and you can get a certificate after the program so you could also attach that in your application and that's just going to help you and there are also some other programs like uh, you can go on Coursera or edX and you can check out some of the top courses that they have there um, and you can get a you can get a certificate from a top university like um, Harvard or something and then attach that with your uh, certificate with your application and it's can, definitely going to help you and uh, let's see some other questions that there are so I'm also making like a selection of other videos so if you have any if you're interested in uh, kind of China or learning in general then check out some of our other my other videos on the platform Yes, the next step after after downloading the form is to submit it uh, to the university. Usually, sometimes you can do um, digital copy or you can do it uh, by by post as well. It's a good idea to contact the university or the embassy to check it. Yeah, some people have problems uploading the form by mobile phone, so it's definitely a good idea, as I think they say in the guide, to use a desktop and I think something else they say if you have issues with downloading the form is uh, something here they say is it's better to use uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Explorer if you have that otherwise you can try it um, can you use WeChat usually uh, WeChat is not the most professional method to send the application so usually I would suggest email is probably better to attach documents you don't really want to be sending it to universities by WeChat and also the universities they have like loads and loads of people contacting them usually on WeChat just from it's just like WhatsApp it's just you probably don't want to be sending that they definitely don't want to be receiving hundreds of scholarship applications on WeChat um, for your Chinese name I think it's not uh, mandatory 
but if you want to have a Chinese name, it's a good idea to try and try and have a Chinese name. I think it doesn't matter at all, but you can try and find a Chinese name. I don't I don't think it will help, but it may help a bit. Just have a good Chinese name. Don't just you can ask a Chinese friend or um, I think we have a article about this actually, so you can I'll see if there is. I'll try and use Google, it's probably better. Yeah, so I think we do actually have a service. If you want a Chinese name, we can we can help you. You can also, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest the Chinese name generator tools. I, I do think it can be really valuable for you to have a really good Chinese name. And uh, yeah, we can help to give you some, some samples of this. So it's a good idea to do that, to have a good Chinese name. And let's see some of the other questions. How do you find the university address where you send the digital copy? Uh, usually on the website, they'll usually have a page where they have the address. So uh, you can check it and check there. And then I would definitely suggest upgrading to some kind of priority one rather than standard mail. Sometimes I've had people send things to me in China and sometimes they just get lost. Uh, and if you don't put the address correctly, it maybe it's if there's something this important, I would definitely upgrade to some kind of signed for or that some kind of DHL uh, or some kind of high quality service. Yeah, I, you don't need a Chinese name. Yeah, if you want to get the information about each embassy, there's a the agency number is like what you would find and you can find a list of the agency's numbers here, which is just like a code for each embassy and the university or whichever, because each of these have a quota. So you can just check on these, which one it is, and I'll put a link in the description as well. And uh, you can also just contact the, the embassy or the university and they should be able to give you it or they should be able to have it on the instructions. Yeah, so I think this is kind of some information that should be helpful. Any other questions, let me know in the comments and best of luck with your application for the Chinese scholarship.